very very slow okay i'm gonna do my volume say something again oh yeah perfect a little bit of a delay can you hear me properly or That's good. <laughs> I love the image you have behind you. What, what does that mean? What is that? Well, the the pyramid means uh, uh, the fire in the middle, which is uh, w what a pyramid stands for, and the, and the symbol inside is actually a Celtic knot that means, uh, you know, humanity's attainment of this of of its external world and an internal world. Uh, so balancing that, balancing that uh, connection. Uh, so the pyramid pyramids were created so that we always remember and never forget uh, the God within. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. It's really really beautiful. <laughs> Very nice. I got a blank wall, but if you if I move my head, you can see a little butterfly. That's a and lovely. I, got, yeah. I have a. Um, Mermaid that a girl sent me, a yeah. friend of ours, and the sculpture, the, it's a stone sculpture with a shell. It's a flower that was made by another friend. <laughs> if I move around, you can see it sometimes. And people say, you still have that butterfly behind you. <laughs> they keep me company. <clears throat> That's good. So I was, I've been really looking forward to this conversation with you. Um, if you hear weird noises, I have, we have two dogs and two cats. I've got one of my dogs right here, actually. Um, she's trying to get a lot of attention. Um, and I have a, yeah, I have a fiance running around doing things. We're in the middle of a storm still. <laughs> Are you? Well, yeah. Um, so how was cool. it? It's been great. Awesome. Because yeah. we live on a, um, on a liveaboard. It's a yacht. So the wind, you know, moves you around and all the sounds of the ropes and everything. It's awesome. It's really cool. Yeah, we love it. Nice. Um, yeah, but we didn't have cell phone for like most of the night and the electricity went out for most of the night. So super glad it's back now. It's great. It's um, warm. Yeah. So I was super happy Violetta sent me um, your details and um, when... I, lo lots of people send me details of people and uh, I usually kind of look at it and feel the resonance, you know, and if, if it says yes, then I'd go and check them out, you know. And when Violetta sent me your link, I would go, yes, <laughs> you know? So I thought, oh, okay, I'll go and check who, who, who doing this, you know, it's like click, you know. And, um, and there you were and, and you had just posted a live uh, chat or something. And, and I started listening and I thought, oh my gosh, he's so nice. You know, I've got to have a conversation with him. So it's like, um, I know it's a conversation, but I'll probably be asking you lots of questions about yourself because we haven't actually had a chance to get to know each other, right? And, yeah. um, and of course the same, you know, like if you're interested in anything or you want to ask anything, you can too. Well, I, uh, Violetta and I have been watching uh, you as well for some time and I really, uh, Special, especially the part where you're moving into this new energy, uh, new concepts of, of, of finding that balance between light and dark, right? Uh, that, you know, a loving and allowing dark to be where it is, and that gives you permission to, to, to be who you are. Um, that there's, there's something in that that you know, I really resonated to that where you were talking about the, uh, that that really light workers have been trying to kill the dark. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, and we've been in this war. Yes, so so uh, it's it's really um, to me interesting to because if we're we need to move into this uh, place where where. We're not in a war, mm -hmm. and the idea of war only creates more. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think that's what you mentioned, you know, when you send light and love to the dark, you're actually extinguishing it. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. And 
I've, I've discovered quite a few things about that because I've discovered very early on that people who are, who've come in from really high frequency uh, planets and uh, dimensions, which we call light here on the planet, um, and people who have evolved in the path of light to become pure light, uh, they don't see darkness. They literally don't see it. They, they don't acknowledge it as a, as a valid state. They don't see it. They think it's an evolved light or that they need saving. Um, with enough time, they're going to see the light and they're going to move into the light and all these other things, you know. And I found that to be fascinating. One day, I remember there was this girl and she said... Um, and in front of me, she was uh, highly psychic, she was highly aware, and there was an entity, a dark entity in her presence. And she said, so I looked at him and I sent him all my love and all my light. And again, oh my gosh, how could you be so cruel? And she went, what do you mean cruel? She says, well, how, can you imagine what that would be like? What happens if somebody sends you a really, really, really high frequency physical energy, like fire, what would happen to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and she says, oh, I would burn alive. She says, yes, that's right. You know, so it's, um, obviously there are individuals, that is true for some individuals. Some individuals come in, are in essence high frequency individuals, and they've, um, uh, they've absorbed and they have implemented and adopted um, uh, low frequency stuff, you know, and they got covered in it and whatever. And so there is a tiny little bit of light in there still left, you know, like their essence. Mm -hmm. And also with them, I think uh, respecting their choices. I mean, if their choices, okay, 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 you know, that was cool. I'm gonna, you know, I need to get out of this now. Um, help, you know, whatever. So, or they start helping themselves usually because they know it's just about remembering, you know, remembering and dropping this stuff off. Exactly. Yeah. So, and yes, go ahead. That's all it is, right? Is, is the fact that uh, we postpone our own enlightenment a lot of times. When we could just be dropping it, dropping things off and remembering who we are. And, <laughs> and, and staying out of these little uh, spirals that we go into psychologically. Right. Uh, into this this energy of admitting who we are and 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 rising to that level right or lowering lowering <laughs> to that level depending who we are right and what we choose uh so yeah the, uh, it's like the allowance judgment but also i think that you know the the discernment and the boundaries um the dark by nature wants to put out the light, so um, conquer it and overcome it and take over. And the light by nature wants to put out the light, the dark, and the same thing, you know. We see it as that's being good because we are extinguishing like low frequency stuff like wars and fear, starvation, and poverty, um, slaves, master type energies, and you know, so we think those things are good to put out the light, the dark. Um, and as it should be, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's our nature and we want to live in a world without those because we're, that's not our natural state or um, environment. Um, and on the other side, they want to um, promote the darkness because that's it's like water and air to them, you know, the, the fear and the poverty and the starvation and all these things is like that's how they that's their reality and that's how they live that's what they feed from and to them it's like um a battle for survival really. yeah. i feel we're coming into a time where uh we understand that there's been kind of a misconception opposites attract is what they said but it never has been. If you look in the universe, it's, it, opposites never attract no matter where you are. That like attracts like. Yeah. And, and so like energies attract like energies. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, in, in my work as a, as a 
programmer or a hypnotherapist or whatever you want to call it. it I, I, I see where these little suggestions get into people and it becomes the status quo to say opposites attract. I know. <laughs> and they're living these relationships that are just tumultuous. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, and as you know, and I know, somebody's feeding off that energy. Oh, absolutely. But, but if we just, you know, realize that even within our own body, our own cells will, will attract to like Mm. and away from you know what i mean it's a natural yeah. thing throughout throughout all of the universe yeah simply attract to like energies right so tell me more about that thing you know what do you see what how do you perceive those entities that feed from the turmoil and the fear and the anger and the suffering on one part on one part they they went into contract to do that right um because we wouldn't, we wouldn't have a choice uh, one way or another. We wouldn't know if we were just absolutely pure light all the time, completely pure light, and had no whatever. We would, we would not know the difference. Uh, you but, wouldn't see the dark. <laughs> yeah, but you still can't. Most people still can't. <laughs> but there's, 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 there's the the need for that contrast for a point for a time but people have gotten to where it's a pattern mm. and you know yeah the the contracts and the the willingness of the light universe the dark universe to meet and see what happens right um that that's been taking place in this timeline on this planet for thousands of years mm -hmm. um but i but we wouldn't have come in if it was, you know, if the human collector still wanted that, and they, they don't. That's why all these individuals, I think most of the majority, if not all of the people who are watching this conversation, came in because it was time for it to be over and have a, like, okay, now you've got to split now because, you know, we've, mm -hmm. we've learned things or we've shared things. And I, I don't know if it's about learning because how can a divine eternal being learn anything? They can't. What I see it as, as it's as um, accumulation of experience. How can a light, pure light being experience darkness if it doesn't exist in the universe? Right. So they go in and experience it in this, in this creation that we, this special, very narrow, small place in the universe, actually, um, where the two came together. And they have a choice. And I know that a lot of pure light beings have chosen to become pure light dark beings and vice versa. So it's like, it's almost like um, it was an experience and then came the choice and that choice opportunity was opened up. Uh, sometimes people fall into the, I don't know, like a, a belief system that says, um, darkness and light is like a theory uh, and I like to point out that it's, it's a literal thing uh, a war is created by that drive to be in a dark place mm -hmm. people who are born there could come in from the energy of a victim or aggressor a savior, a martyr and they come in there and have experiences uh, but it, I see it as experiences rather than learning or, or anything like that. I see it like, let's go and have an experience, you know. Many other people, maybe the other timelines, let's go and have an experience of uh, bright green. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know? Frequency, this color. Yeah, let's see if we can experience this color and see what it's like and um, see if we choose to become that like bright green. I I have a, mm, I don't know this information came through about about uh, source energy itself as well what it is and it's through us that it gets to experience what it is and that if we narrow this up and we get we get the clutter out of the way like our our need to be the warrior our need to be all of this these things. And we come back to a simplistic version of it, which is source energy doesn't know what it is. And we're 
experiencing and sending that information back to source energy. So we're in this relationship with source energy. Source energy also becomes the experience. And we get free choice in that. We get free choice. Some people don't know they have free choice in that. Mm -hmm. but we have free choice in that, right? Like you were mm -hmm. saying, the beings that, that, that higher beings, off-world beings, um, don't even understand really what this darkness is or sometimes or sometimes what this light is yeah because they're in in a in such a a a a, a, a relationship with themselves creating experiences right mm -hmm. that, and they have they have basically stopped looking at things that they don't want right and <laughs> look at things they do want and moving that way you know um i think that this is where we're evolving to where we we realize that w we ourselves are that director mm -hmm. that's directing what experiences we're getting and that we can choose different experiences we can get excited about a new experience or a new learning or coming into an a, a different state of being right yeah yeah that 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 is the same person isn't it the being outside and the being inside it is the same person um i saw in 2011 before 2011 for my entire life i knew it wasn't just a belief but i knew that the entire human collective was going to move a few notches up in the frequency of experience and was going to vibrate much more comfortable, much better. Fear, anger, war, all those things were going to just vanish out of the human experience. And um, it was the entire collective. All of the people of the planet were going to go whoop. And then in 2011, at the start of it, you know, because as a collective, we are co-creating and we have to do it through... Um, Kind of consensus, you know, and there was all these um, individuals who were saying, including the dark ones, saying, "We're not done, you know. We're not done with this uh, pull, push, pull of dark and light. Uh, we want to continue. And if you force us, that's a, a break of the free will that's prevalent in this, you know, creation that we've created. And all of a sudden, then it was." It was like a, a, a mutual decision of okay, let's let's give people a choice, and they can we'll split it in two. So people who want to continue with the light, dark, or dark thing, they can go here, and the people who want to continue on to a higher vibration. That you see, when all the lower frequency stuff falls away, the the high frequency stuff moves like for is here, and then it moves up. So you have all this extra experience that we haven't got to yet as a collective right yeah. so that's what that i have wanted and um it was split and i i was devastated uh, i i was in pain and it was like my entire self just got split you know it was horrible and i couldn't believe it and to me it was like oh my gosh they won you know because at the time even though I didn't have one or the other, I wasn't light or dark, I still aren't, but I had chosen to work to promote the higher frequency stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So when that moment came, we had to make a choice. Everybody who was in a human body had to make a choice, including me. So I looked at it, I actually thought about it quite a bit. I thought about it for days because I don't have that judgment, right? And, and I thought, well, actually at the end of the day, I much prefer the company and the creation of those individuals who are high frequency. They create the most amazing um, nurturing uh, environments. They don't create pollution. Um, they support and love their creatures around them and they are their humans. And, you know, their people still have a lot of, darkness intertwined in their bodies and their uh, minds and their um, emotional bodies and their egos and stuff like that but 
they're working really hard to not be ruled by that and they are so much more pleasant to hang out with and to create with so i said yeah i'm going to go with that <laughs> i'm going to go continue with them right plus i had come in with that program already of raising the frequency so it was it would have been tough for me to swap sides so i chose it but from 2010 to 11 to 2017 we still had the it was like a bridge yeah, we and when I'm saying this, it's not outside things, it's inside us. We were the bridge. So we were visible to both light and dark, and we contained both. And we were on the bridge going, come on, guys, this way, this way, come on, girls, this way, this way, you know. And the other side was the same, you know, come on, it's impossible, you can't go there, that's a lie, you know, come here, come here. And we were kind of the ones that were on the fence or whatever, so the ones on the bridge were going, oh, I don't know, you know. And what surprised me was the amount of people who were higher frequency who chose to stay in the light dark paradigm or the dark paradigm because they weren't done. Like people who follow the path of Bodhisattva, for example, the service to others, um, or savior energies or martyr energies, if they came into the high frequency stuff, they wouldn't have anybody to save and they weren't done <laughs> with that stage of their experience moving into the unbounded spirit and being creation itself they weren't ready so it's like they wanted to stay in that darker light dark experience where they would have people to save and or be saved you know it's like yeah you had mentioned you had mentioned about the collective right? mm -hmm. and like a like a hologram there's the collective and then there's the individual yeah and and in the individual the individual has every divine right and free will to create as they say right so we can look at it from the perspective of a collective doing this which is arduous because how are you going to what are you going to do how are you going to change the minds of everybody? But the thing be, to move the collective up. But if people take it into the singularity and say that you have every right to, to, to do that, that raises the vi vibration and the frequency in the collective consciousness. Right. Somebody is breaking through and doing that. And that changes the vibration of the collective. So I kind of, Personally, I kind of work with people in that way to understand that they have their divine free will uh -huh. to and freedom to do what they, they wish to do with their own experience. And whatever the collective's doing, it's up to the collective, but they're raising vibration and experiencing that. And that, as you know, moves through the, the collective as a choice now. As a, right. It's almost like they map it to the collective so others can follow yeah. that path, right? Like the whatever they call the hundred monkey effect. <laughs> right, yes. Right? Is that is that our con we're all connected. Mm -hmm. It does take it does take uh, individuals to go through that to experience it to, so that it spreads out as a choice. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a key word there, the choice. Yeah, choice to do that, or choice to go the other way too, and yeah. to map that for the, the other side. That's a choice, and it's a moment-to-moment -moment choice. It's not like, oh, okay, today I'm gonna choose that. I'm... It's really hard to maintain it on a daily life type situation. So you have to do that choice over and over and over every time you're talking to somebody, every time you fall into a low frequency stuff. You know, you have to pull yourself out of it by choice, not by naturally, oh, I'm so good, I'm not going to engage in that, I'll take the high road. <laughs> yeah, right. Some people can do it, but I know I can't. So I have to, like, personally make a choice moment to moment, right? Mm -hmm. I'm really fascinated by um, how you can see all these things. And tell, me, tell us a little about, about yourself, you know, what, what, how was your life, you know? Have you always had this connection or something, something happened or tell us about yourself? Well, many things happened um, to remind me. Um, I came in remembering. Mm -hmm. I have the memory of actually coming here and choosing to come. I remember vividly of taking two, two orbs 
in my hands in that form and holding them to my chest and loving myself into being. I remember the two paths uh, that that was presented to me. It was one of defending who I was and one of just being who I am. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there was that in the beginning of things. I was very spiritual even as a child. Um, and then I went into the school system and then I lost track of it because they were telling me I was, you know, none of these things that I was talking about was any good and get rid of that or you're going to get, you know, put in a little you know, in restraints. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, but, uh, and I continued on through the school system being taught a whole different thing about myself. Uh, that wasn't true. And then, um, a few things happened. Uh, I decided to, um, they had, uh, deemed me as having severe learning disabilities and, and that I probably wouldn't learn. Mm -hmm. uh, something inside of me didn't resonate well with that, you know, and I, I became very aware of people's perceptions towards you and how they affect you. Mm. Um, how they see you affects you. And so at a young age, I learned how to be able to have my own perception of myself and radiate the other way. Oh, cool. <laughs> Very nice. Now, there was a point where I healed my, myself. Um, and I remember that moment uh, where I... I drew, a, I drew a line in the carpet with my finger, you know, just made a mark in the carpet. With yeah. my and I said, when I step across this line, I want a healing. And I was still <laughs> taught externally at that time. Uh, I want a healing. And I, you know, if you can create universes and everything else, I could heal my mind, right? Right. And I was very determined and very, you know. How old were you? I was, at that time, I was probably... In my in my twenties, okay. right? And when I stepped across that line, and the most amazing thing happened was I got a tingling sensation in my head, and it went through my body, and all of a sudden I went from my mind into another mind, a uh, 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 um, a we mind. <laughs> an akashic mind uh -huh. like this mind this mind was was far too vast to fit in here right i don't know about you but you work probably best with questions as well when people ask you a question all of a sudden the answer comes and you don't even know where it comes from right? yeah yeah it's um i i love it when people ask questions because it's like I'm always looking at a massive, massive forest, and that's reality. And then when people ask me a question, it's about zooming into a leaf, you know? And I love that because otherwise I'm, I'm, I'm not able to, you know, it's like, and I see the leaf and I can describe it, you know? It's like, cool. Exactly. And so that, that, that ability belongs in that other aspect, you know, this greater aspect of the mind. Mm. You can just about any question a person has because you tap into that right and so that's what i was talking about in, you know for most of us it's pretty simple now but for me it was profound that <laughs> yes it is to be able to all of a sudden uh, be asked a question and know the answer through for me it was through feeling i would have a feeling uh, yes wisdom and and so that was one experience and then and then uh, because of the way that I was kind of, uh, the way things went in the school system, I, I kind of had a low self-esteem mm. uh, because of what went on. And in that, you know, I, you know, I, I took to partying and drinking a lot. Right? Mm -hmm. And there was this one time that I was driving down the road with a friend of mine and uh, we got taken right off the road, got taken into a different, I don't know if it was a different dimension or if it was a, a ship itself. Mm. It was like a kind of a silvery cloud up in the sky, looked like a cloud. And there was a light that came out and around it and behind it. <laughs> one came out and it went wider. And then the third one came out and then came behind the car. 
And when it came behind the car, we were gone <laughs> anymore. And when we went to this whatever place it was, it was like they were reminding me, you know, of things. Mm -hmm. That there was a time when the control was going to increase on the planet and we need to free the minds and hearts of people back in the zone. There's reality that is a box, uh, reality, and and that there is yet a way vaster reality outside the box. And that there was a crunching down going to take place and we needed to be able to open people and so that they wouldn't. You know. And so there was many things that I was, I was communicated uh, at that point. Um, uh, things that they had done, which, you know, I found out later on the thing I didn't know was real, uh, but they had this pyramid sitting there. I mean, it was mm -hmm. totally. Every time the flat face would come to me, there was a symbol in that pyramid that went through my third eye and into the back of my head. And I remember every time it turned, there was a new symbol and a new symbol and a new symbol. It just kept going, and I don't know how long it went. And it was much later in my life, you know, like only about four years ago, maybe, that I seen these two uh, pictures. One was of dark matter in space. Mm -hmm. And they were able to put on the right filter and see that it was like a nervous system. Mm -hmm. And the brain functioning. And when I seen those two pictures together, it was like being... <laughs> and I knew what those... I knew what those... those symbol here. They were star charts. Oh, fabulous. And it was like I could hear the beings again talking to me, and it was like uh, you see, there, there's going to be infiltration coming in to raise the vibration of the planet and these other star systems. Mm -hmm. And these these star charts are also a symbol of the consciousness on those, those planets. Mm -hmm. So when they come through, it's to help you recognize them when they come in. So mm -hmm. most of my time now is spent as like a welcoming crew, you know, a welcoming committee. Welcome to planet Earth, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that word. Vibration. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And 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 people when they get on get on to their mission and why they're here, they feel so much better. Yeah. They know that they're coming here for a reason, mm -hmm. but you know, there is this this programming that goes on that gets them off it, you know. And, uh, so I mean, that was one of the biggest ones. And how old were you for that one? I was I was later twenties when that happened. Late twenties, okay. But there was missing time, and my friend and I discussed. Well, we didn't discuss it. That was a weird thing. We didn't discuss it for three days. We just were like in a blank state, and then we one day sat down and said, "What happened?" <laughs> right. Because we were taken off the road, and then we were put back on the road, still driving. It was right. Just... <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Have you ever read the books by this girl who um, interviewed uh, Native Americans um, in North America, and then she went to Central America about ET contact and um, conversations and stuff? Uh, her surname is Six Killer. I can't remember her first name. She's got amazing books. Have you ever read any of her stuff? No, but I, what I have heard is, is, is information on that is, is that, you know, nobody ever asked the Native Americans. Well, she did. You know, she, because. Yeah. She's been asking them for decades and she's compiled these books, right? No. Amazing stuff. And the way you described it. So many, so many stories exactly like that. Driving along and then poof, you know, you're taking up and all these things happen. And then, I mean, the experience were not all the same. Some people were very, very afraid and they felt it was a negative experience. Some people were very positive and felt there were positive experiences. So it's like the experience itself was kind of felt by each individual separately, but the actual driving along and then you're taking and then you're back, you know. Um, and also the other one is like when they come back, they're at their destination, right? That's the other one. It's like, and there's like 
there behind the wheel at their destination they look at each other okay but there even there we didn't talk about it for days that's also there so did your friend also become um a worker for raising the frequency of the planet or did, did this firm he something does else? in his own way um he's more he's more uh working with you know just individuals he does he does work uh you know in helping actually uh, helping the native canadians mm -hmm. because he's native himself uh so he does help in a in a different way than i do i'm more uh, uh right out there with it but uh yeah. but yeah um the interesting thing is that um uh when i went went to go back to uh, my old lifestyle because of course without something new <laughs> if we don't create something new then we end up going back to where we were very uh, good point you know very good point and so so i started i thought well i mean i could go back partying again and i remember i was at this bush party because you brought up native native americans and this was really ties in yeah uh after this event i come back and i'm I go to a what we call a bush party here. I don't know uh, where we go out in the bush and we have this big bonfire and you know we have everyone's partying and there might be you know 100, 200 people there. Wow. <laughs> I was I was up for whatever reason I was on the outside ring this time. You know, yeah. outside. usually I'm right in the middle of things, eh? but I was hanging out on the outside rim and. I, something caught my vision on the side vision and I look over and there's this man coming out of the bush in leathers in native traditional native leather pants coat whatever braids and he walks up now this this is strange to see right okay yeah walks up to me and he says what are you doing and I says, oh, we're having a party here. And then he looks at me deeply and he says, no, what are you doing? <gasps> and I felt it and I knew who, I knew who it was, right? <laughs> Although in the form in the ship, they were light beings, uh, like they were, you could barely make out their features because they were glowing so brightly. Mm. And they didn't they didn't you know walk like we do it was more like they they kind of hovered in and glided <laughs> but it looks like you know to me they could take form if they, they wanted can. to yeah they can and it was just a reminder and a jolt and then i come back to so what did you choose to do after that then no more party time that was it yeah yeah that was it <laughs> No more party time. In fact, I dropped my beer when he said that. Oh, wow. <laughs> said that, I went into a stunned state. It was like a boo state. And then when I looked back, all I seen was his, him, his back going into the bush again. Right, right. Going into the bush. Yeah. It was really odd. <laughs> experiences like that. But this is all part of, part of, uh, nudging you and pushing me and and encouraging me to continue on you know, yeah to do this to to help people to come into their i call it to come into their true nature mm. it's almost like we have a mask that we have been programmed to wear to fit into society and it's about taking that mask off and being who you truly are right yeah. a lot of people have uh, had um get a lot of fear when the, when you tell them it's okay to do that, you know? Um, I mean, it wasn't always okay to do that. <laughs> That's what I don't know if you had any experiences in your life when, you know, it was a bit of a dangerous to be yourself. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you know, they hit us in the fear. It's an old uh, soul or not, or cellular memory, soul memory. In, in the day when we were nomads, right, and we traveled about, you know, to kick, get kicked out of the group was probably your death, right? Yes, so, yeah. And so they, they have, you know, you see, I, I studied hypnosis because I wanted to know what they were doing to us. Ah, oh, nice. Uh, 
more so than I wanted to figure out what was going on because I knew yeah. we were clear God source energy. Right. <laughs> and yes. How are they convincing these gods to be limited? You know? I know. I'm always fancy, I mean, fascinated by that. It's like, yeah. So what did you find out? I can't wait to hear. Well, I, you know, I found out with this, especially with this one, with the, with the nomad concept, is that they, it, it, they drill into us that we're, we're going to be excommunicated if we leave the box. Right. You see crazies outside the box. Right? Mm-hmm. And it isn't crazy. It's more advanced, right? Mm-hmm. But there is parameters set up that say this is reality and that's it. Now, people get scared because they, they're afraid that they're going to be rejected by the group. Mm-hmm. They're terrified that they're going to be excommunicated if they step out or take the mask off. And so uh, helping them to become connected to their something more, their own, what I call God, goddess within, mm-hmm. connect with that energy, then, then they feel a safety and being able to take the mask off. They feel a safety with that connection to source energy. But this has all been, you know, uh, people say to me, I don't know if I can be hypnotized, and I just, because, you know, uh, I've got a pretty strong mind, and I just laugh because we've all been hypnotized. (laughs) What do you mean you can't be hypnotized? How do you live every day in a state of hypnotized state in hypnotized state that's true that's a good one so what else did you do in your life then well i created i created all kinds of uh of programs for people to help them come through and and that's what i've been spending most of my time at uh, going around and lecturing and helping people to come out of this this hypnosis and back in societal hypnosis that I call right. it, and come back into their true nature. Super. Yeah. And um, yeah. So I became a clinical hypnotherapist because it was mainly because it was an avenue that I could work in. Right. Uh, that was free, a freedom. Mm. You know? Free. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you do like um, regression therapy too? Do you find that or is it all connected? Yeah, I do regression therapy too. Um, I was just asked that last night and somebody said that to me. And and I have a very unique way of working with, with hypnosis. In fact, uh, my students and, and others have shared with me that, Dwayne, you have taken what you learned in hypnotherapy and changed it so much. You kind of, I don't know if you can call it hypnotherapy anymore. <laughs> cool. Because I'm always looking for the way that's going to uh, make it easy, effortless, mm. free. And so now it's morphed into something that I call, I mean, I still teach the hypnotherapy course. Right. Like, but I, I go around and I, and I talk and teach uh, trans alchemy, which is, is, is different in the sense that uh, calling it exactly what it is instead of hypnotherapy, because it is an advanced uh, hypnotherapy. What do you and call it again? Trans alchemy. Trans, trans alchemy. Yeah. Super, I like that name. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, it's an alchemy. Because, because when, we, when, we, uh, when we go into a state within ourselves, <clears throat> this state is an ancient state. Um, we take a deep breath, we hold it to the mental count of three and slowly, slowly exhale, and we start moving into midbrain. Brain. We're out of the top part of the mind where mm-hmm. all the fear patterns are. Okay. Fear patterns are mismanifesting everything, right? Okay. And when we drop into here, now we have we're we're in that in that ancient state. Mm-hmm. That ancient state that we can start to make changes in our life because it's not connected with fear. It's connected right. with love, you know? Yeah. So um, there's a lot to it, but it's simpler approaches of going into trance states. 
uh, as well. Um, and those trans states, uh, all we have to do is look at another, another person and go into that state ourselves. Mm. And when we go into that state ourselves, then the other person, because of the, the, the what's called the uh, mirror neurons, uh, as you're watching another person or talking to another person, you automatically join them in that vibration. Right. Making sense of it and doing things to yourself. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really fascinating. But it takes, this style takes all the resistance out of it. Mm. Nice. I was used to say, you know, to my clients, you know, okay, so now we're going to go into hypnosis. Well, boom, all of a right. sudden. Right. The resistance. <laughs> now I just talked to them oh, when they went in, right? Yeah, that's really cool. You I get like the work that. done, and that's what, what, they, what they want, you know. Yeah. Raise vibration, or un, uh, uh, release blocks. Yeah. And, so where are you based? Are you in Canada? Yeah, I'm in Canada, but my office is online. I don't ah, have a physical yeah. office anymore. Um, well, I meant you as a person, you know, live and, you know. <laughs> Edmonton, Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, right. I can see Canada out of my window because I live in uh, the Macau Reservation up in Nia Bay, very tippy-top northwest of the United States of Washington. And um, there's uh, the there's like a Vancouver. Vancouver. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I can see it though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not very good with names. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll yeah. British Columbia, Vancouver. My one one of my old teachers lived on in, on uh, San Juan Island in Pelican Bay, mm. and uh, that's up indeed close to where you are there. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's called the something of San Juan. I'm so bad with names. I've lived here for two years and I'm still, you know, but that's because of something else. <laughs> it's like, I don't do, I can't do names or numbers. It's like one of those weird things. Um, so, and sorry? And that's fine because you do what you do very well. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was going to, I wanted to talk to you about something. Who cool with you? See the broader perspective. What I'm seeing for 2017 is that the energy, again, it's like the embodiment. You know, I've been talking about embodying the new paradigm for a couple of years now. Um, because people were, a lot of individuals who would come to me because I was, mainly um, aiming the message to the masses. So you had to speak a vocabulary that they could understand. Mm. But I w what I found was that many, many individuals who've woken up and were on their path to uh, co-creating that more beautiful for us world, they had this visual or belief that it was something that they were waiting for and that was going to happen outside of themselves or that they needed to create a light body to step into or it was going to be an event or a shift outside right and i kept saying no, no, no you actually have it's you and you are the one who needs to choose to embody that new paradigm mm -hmm. and so look and see what does that mean to you new paradigm what does that mean well there's no fear there's no war there's peace there's nurturing and love and uh, abundance and support and expansion of awareness, you know, way more aware of that higher level of frequencies. It's as well, start embodying that then, you know, it's like, what are you waiting for? Let's do it. Exactly. Um, and now it's like the bridge is over. There's no more trying to convince people. And it's like um, the, the people who are, have done it through evolution or through spiritual paths, and now they are the expression, the, the core essence is it's connected to the beingness of flight. I'm, I'm using words that doesn't invalidate 
the other, but also doesn't invalidate the state of oneness, which doesn't have dark light or any other color. It's all it w it's the state of non-separation. So it's like you can't have those. But so it doesn't invalidate that state, but it is a chosen source, and to embody that chosen source fully. So even at a physical level, the negativity that we have intertwined by choice, but also through agreements and contracts and all sorts of stuff, which we can drop all of those now. Yes. Um, pulling those negative energies out and just dissolving them um, and just becoming that expression of pure light, uh, whatever color that might be for each person, but it's a high frequency, different perspective and diff of, a, of an experience. And... Um, I feel very strongly that this year is about that. And at a, at a personal level, I've talked about the hurting, the, the, the healing of the hurt. Um, and you're probably familiar with the um, standing rock situation uh, where the protectors of the water stood firmly to protect the water. And the elders would tell people who were coming in who were hurting to heal the hurt first in the ceremony. Another healing modality is to heal the hurt first and then take action. And I feel very strongly that at a planetary level, all of us people here on the planet, 2017 is the year to really, really concentrate on that. Healing the internal hurt, our familial hurt, our social hurt, our cultural hurt, healing it within us, not like I'm sending love to the tribe, blah, blah, or I'm sending love to that country that's at war. No, I mean, that comes in later. But within us, healing that hurt without judgment. And then I'm asking people, you know, it's like, find a healer, find a therapist. There we have Dwayne now, you know, um, to assist you if you need it. Um, some people don't need assistance. They can just get into that state and do it. That's right. And, but if you need a system, find yourself somebody to assist you, heal the personal hurt, and then spend, you know, pay for another 10 minutes to heal the collective hurt, mm -hmm. the hurt around the planet. So it's like a two stage thing. And I'm not, uh, you know, it's like, this is something that I've, I've, I'm seeing and something that really resonates with me. Uh, I'm always moving through that resonance to see what, how it's best to concentrate on things I've moved out of the general public figure thing, you know, moved out of that. That's no longer my role and other people are stepping into that role. My role is more to be concentrated on those individuals who um, are ready to embody fully their, their essence of light. Um, and I'm just wondering about when you look at it or when I explain it, what do you see? What, how do you see it? Well, I agree with what you're saying. Um, definitely that we're going to be healing that it's about healing that hurt inside and then healing the collective hurt. In that process, there's something that I work with that's called the internal critic. And it, it is not you. Uh, that critic was, was a hypnotized program that people have where it is uh, inside of us and keeps us from that, from uh, stepping into our, 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 our greatest aspect of ourselves. It wants you to keep the mask on. Mm. When you remove the critic and you listen to the loving voice inside, we come into that. We come into that. It makes all uh, other uh, therapies that we want to do with ourselves to heal much easier. Mm. Once the critic is gone, as like you were talking about these talons of negativity, and and that critic won't stop. And I've done everything possible to negotiate with the critic and to do all these things with the critic. And honestly, just get rid of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> yes. You make an agreement and say, okay, that's it. You're done. You're done. 
you're out of here because I know who I am. Yeah. Uh, get to that point. Yeah. Get to that point, you know, just like in our systems everywhere else, we have to realize we're the government. Mm-hmm. We have to realize that we're the ones that make that decision. You know, we got people that are doing uh, free energy devices. Stop asking dad for permission. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Um, so we have, we have this psychological paradigm that we've set up, you know, where we're under, mm. come out from under that. And so that's what I'm seeing this year. I'm seeing people healing the hurt and stepping into their true power, their true nature. And I don't mean a controlling power where you're controlling people. I mean, the, the power to take care of your own lot in life, mm-hmm. your own reality. And stepping into that, and that starts to spread because people say, hey, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> right. You're doing that. You know, this is supposed to be the rules. And you go, no, <laughs> really, actually, you can make your own uh, <laughs> as long as you hurt no one. Right. 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 Uh, and just- well, that can be turned around because you could say, for example, a very negative person around you, right? And you say, no, you're not allowed to do that in my reality. Leave. And they say, they turn around because this is a little trap. Turn around and says, oh, that's so hurtful. Can you, how could you push me out like that? That's so hurtful. Who's going to help me now? You know, um, that's a typical light worker trap. So it's like when you say you're not hurting anybody, like truly, you have to see it from a different perspective. If you allow that person to create hurt in you or those around you, because you don't want to hurt their feelings, you're actually creating bad karma for them because, or you're being like a co-creator of bad karma for them. If you believe in karma, it's like, uh, or bad energy feelings of themselves because you're allowing them to hurt you. So the sooner you remove them from your environment, even if it's painful to them, the better for them because, or the more compassionate it is for them because you're minimizing the negative effects they're having on you and those around you. So it's like, yeah, be careful with that word. Don't hurt anyone because it's like it can be used against you, you know, because people... What, I mean, use what I mean by that word is manipulate other people. Ah, uh, right. Right. Yeah, yeah I, li- I like the way you explain power because the way it's very similar to how I see it. I see it... You're extremely powerful. You're a creator of universes. And that power that you have and are is being used. Mm -hmm. So all you're doing is taking it back. Now, be the one to use it rather than allowing others to use it to create their reality that they want. Just bring it back and use it yourself. (laughs) You know, uh, I think and this is what you mean. I think this is what you mean. There's so many conspiracy theories out there that create fear. Mm, yeah. And at one point in time, you got to look at it and say, I'm entertaining that. I'm creating it. They're right. using it. Right. Is yeah. that what you mean? Yes, exactly. As you feel the fear, you're yeah. feeding that reality. As you feel the frustration, the helplessness, and the anger, you're feeding with your power, your emotions, and your creative omnipotence that reality you know so take it all back and create something and find co-creators you know that have a high frequency and feed their realities you know exactly exactly yeah Yeah. wonderful (laughs) i like that yeah yeah because uh you know at the end of the day the thing that we're not getting is that we're that we're gods and goddesses in our own right Mm -hmm. and have been we've just got a little sleepy Um, (laughs) yes it's time to time to wake up and realize who we are and that we're creating and in the same fashion we always did since since the beginning of whatever um we we come to this place inside of us where we realize that i am that that looks through my eyes Mm. I have never been born, nor will I ever die. I'm <laughs> we can live from that place inside of us. 
you 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 move beyond uh, anything that can happen to you here, right? Yeah. When a help. when a person does that, it's a, a radical change. I mean, it it really radically changes their life radically. Yeah, it's really quite cool. It was a, the creation of reality stuff and stepping away from that. Like when you said, you know, you, you, you're eternal, but you're not, you know, that, what you said, I can't say it in so good words, so I'll just leave it as that. <laughs> well, there, there's actually a discussion we're having at um, my platform, which is Walk With Me Now, the, at the moment about what do we work for, uh, particularly if it's a person who is a public speaker or um, public figure. What is the message we deliver? So is it the message of let's manifest, let's create, let's empower ourselves, let's take back our power and create from that higher frequency a more uh, resonant reality for us and the human species, the ones that choose it, of the human species? Or do we go all the way and release all of those things and just go into oneness, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, the way that I see it is that I don't, personally, me, Emilia, I don't create. I stepped into a dream of creation, right? And I saw a person sleeping. For example, this is like a visual example. I saw a person sleeping inside this dream. So I, I woke up and then woke him up and say, hey, hey, you know, you're dreaming, you're dreaming. And they wake up inside the dream and they go, right, whoa, I totally am dreaming. Thank you. Thank you for waking me up. And I shake them again and says, no, you're dreaming. You're dreaming. And they say, yes, I know I was dreaming, but don't worry about it. I'm awake now. And oh, my God, I'm in a nightmare. And I says, well, and then you click, I click. And I go, um, well, this is your nightmare. So why don't you make it into a really beautiful dream instead? So they go, yeah, that's a great idea. So they step into this other reality, this other dream that they've just created, and it's beautiful. But I had originally stepped into their dream when it was a nightmare, so I had to embody that nightmare to be able to be part of that dream and wake them up. So I step into their new dream, the beautiful one, and I have to shed all that negative stuff because it doesn't belong in their new dream, the beautiful, beautiful dream. And they're creating it. It's an amazing, beautiful, beautiful dream, and it could last a billion years. Yeah. And I go up to them and, and I shake them and say, hey, 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 you're dreaming, you're dreaming. You know, wake up, wake up. And they go, oh, I'm wide awake. Thank you very much. I know exactly how to do this thing. And eventually... One of them or somebody who's watching, they go, oh, yeah, I am actually dreaming this. And, and this body is actually a creation of that dream. And um, so if, if I'm not this dream and this is not reality, then how do I really wake up? And then I just see, well, where did you come in from? You know, because every, I'm not unique in walking into that dream. They did too at some point and they started creating their own dreams. And um, so it's like that, you know, what does it matter? Um, and then there's an energy also, a feeling that I see a lot. And I start reading a book about somebody who reached enlightenment and it's amazing, beautiful. And all of a sudden it turns into this same pattern. And the pattern is um, this reality, this is the lowest frequency one. This reality cannot be changed. Um, you have to, oneness is it, you know. And then I look at it and go, okay, but even oneness is a dream. So what are you talking about? You know, why is that dream superior to this one? Why would that dream of oneness, being oneness, be superior to the dream of being this? Why is the dream of being source energy better or superior to the dream of you being Dwayne, Inelia, John, Mary, you know, uh, why is that superior? It's just a different dream, you know? So how, you know, it's like, I don't know, I just wanted to share that with you when you started talking about this. You know. Everything, everything is real and unreal at the same time. And if we live in that, that space, that space of, that space of, Understanding that as we're going through whatever we're going through is that it's real 
and it's unreal at the same time because mm. it's all it's all always ever a dream right right always. yeah until we pop out of like you're talking about completely out of that 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 concept of 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 dreaming and i think that's the unbounded spirit yeah yeah to step in and dream dream things what's that, what's that feel like what's that feel like to step out of all dream well see even to ask that question how does it feel like there is no feeling that feeling is part of that part of the dream is to feel and one of the big struggles I had when I was requested of, to me to become a public speaker or voice or, and face of empowerment, one of the big struggles I had was, but it, what does it matter? Why is it so important if that's what the, it's just creating this new dream the, the difference between the two to me and at a universal level, even as a, a, a conceptual of reality that we max out at, which would be oneness, I think. Uh, I don't know if anybody's gone. I know that behind oneness is like that infinite potential, right, existence. Um, so in that perspective, the difference between experiencing life and light and dark um, and then experiencing life at a higher frequency spectrum, it's teeny winchy winch, you can hardly tell, you know? But the difference, you, if you blink, you miss it, you know? But here, in our human bodies, in the daily life, it's massive, <laughs> massive. So I suppose that's the only way I can really express it. Um, I hear these little trick words, you know, like say, if something matters, it's because, and that, that's why the word matter, it's elements, you know, it's solidity, because it matters, then it's matter, <laughs> you know. Um, but who does, the, it's like that, you know, when, when does that come in? Um, and then at that level of experience beyond the source, beyond um, oneness, you have that same feeling of, uh, it's like, whoa, sorry. <laughs> That's my kitty cat jumped on the computer. Yeah, he's going to explain it now. <laughs> just, just, look, just look in my eyes and I'll transmit. Yeah, there you go. There, he's transferring all that knowledge and information to you. <laughs> That's Brad, Brad Pitt. Oh, Brad Pitt, okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he's so gorgeous, isn't he? <laughs> that to me, yes. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. So, With the blue eyes, look at that. Uh, such blue eyes, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, you know, <clears throat> we could go and I've seen individuals going to an absolute mind boggle or <clears throat> mind stimulation type thing. I'm not going to say the actual words I used. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? The mind. Da -da -da -da. Um, in trying to conceptualize it. Mm -hmm. When it isn't really something you can conceptualize. It's a state of being. Um, I remember years ago, we did an exercise where we visualized it as a pool, the pool of the infinite potential. And then you could visualize yourself stepping into that because that's from a human consciousness perspective, that's the closest I can describe it as, mm -hmm. right? When you step through, and that's just the gate through to that other type of experience um, that is so beyond our comprehension that we can't even imagine it. So it's like you can imagine yourself stepping into, into that pool of potential, infinite potential, and then you have an experience, and that is ex the experience. But also what fascinates me is that whenever 
we talk about these things with individual I talk uh, or this topic comes up I have a sense or, a, or an energy of wanting to be there wanting to experience it wanting to understand it from the other person right and then what do we do how do we do that then we may perhaps think about creating a vessel that we can carry our consciousness into that is compatible to that reality right and then ta-da! now you know how you got here <laughs> yep. it's like between between the words there's and thoughts there is this space yes like music there needs to be the notes and the silence in between mm -hmm. if it was all just straight notes it would not be a song it would have to be the silence plays a big part and when we step into that that silence and we let all all of it go and we just be and float there but you're still being yeah hmm. <laughs> yeah it's like somebody asked me what was your experience of coming into the planet and i says well where from where it says well from or the original you know what was your first experience of being and i moved into that space and i thought oh the first space of being was when I stepped through the infinite potential. And then I became oneness. I became everything. Then that was the first stage of being. The first stage of being is everything. Everything that ever existed, every object, every person, every thought, every space, every space between thoughts and existence, every time um, that ever was and ever will be every everything right without separation and then i became other so there was oneness and there was no oneness you know it's like how that that's how it's and then it was i and other mm -hmm. and then there was uh, us like the i split into us and them so there was two of multiplicities and then there was many us in groups and then many us in groups and then other in groups. You know, and it's like it just goes on and on and on until you become a one individual within that multiplicity of existence. But you're mm -hmm. still being, you're still existing in that reality. And you have to, you don't have to, but you can maybe perceive and know all of a sudden this is a knowing that there's a, a state of not being, but existing, you know, it's like, I don't understand, I don't, there's no words, because there's really, we can't step through that in our perception, you know? <laughs> Just know that it's there. <clears throat> know that it's there, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And that we are able to, and we have that drive, we have the drive to, I want to know what that's like, and I want to know what that feels like, I want to have that experience. And then you know the drive, you know, you recognize that drive, that is why you're here. And, and, and so awareness, awareness, like the stories I heard were before anything, there was nothing, no sight, no sound, no nothingness no time and out of this nothingness something within the nothingness became aware of itself and when it did that's when the happened right because all of a sudden it became aware of itself and in being aware of itself it created another and then it had company for the first time in its life right uh, or was massive who knows <laughs> right and then and then it all became because they knew what to do they just created and, and created another um but there's that space you got it 
Yes, there is. And, I'm, and, and, and we hear it, we hear it in some of the ancient teachings of, that it's the nameless. Because, it, because as soon as we name it, then it's all of a sudden something else. Right. But it's we, us, I, it's the nameless, right? But as soon as you say I, it's... it's, it's now it's changed. Yeah, now it's changed, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> and then, of course, you, know, you have to look at it and say, well, okay, so we go there, but at a daily life with people who are working nine to five and want to create uh, this beautiful new dream. Even calling it a dream is val invalidates the importance of it and the, how much it matters at this level. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we do? How do we experience it? We call it a new paradigm, right? A high frequency paradigm. We call it that because that validates their experience of what they want to do. Um, and makes it powerful, makes it like, yes, I would like to step into that paradigm with you, right? And give it power, give it my power so that it becomes solid it, it, because it matters, so it becomes matter. <laughs> so it's like a full circle thing, you know? It's like, yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, I find it fascinating. You know, and I, 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 I'm just using this as a, as a, as a metaphor, because now we have other ideas out there. I mean, there's more <laughs> ideas out there than there is, you know. But I'm going to share this. At one time, okay. we, the world was flat. Okay. Yes. And this is interesting because we all thought the world was flat, and there was people willing to risk their lives to go out to prove that it was round. And then they proved that it was round, and then the whole society shifted. Yes. Round. One time we thought we thought that the sun crossed the sky, right? And we built everything clockwise according to, right? Because it moves clockwise across the sky. But in real, the planet is turning counterclockwise, right? And so that's what gives it that illusion but with you know we have made these jumps in societal understanding you know we've made these jumps and when we do you know the whole of population follows suit and then it becomes real then it becomes real <laughs> yes that's an extremely slow process <laughs> just believe you're real now right um because uh but Look at what happens with logic versus creation. Okay. Creation. Creation says this is this new thing. And logic says, no, it's not. Right? Can't be. Right? This is the way it is. Until enough people believe in this, and then all of a sudden logic, like a weasel, changes sides. <laughs> <Right>, yes. Because <laughs> it, you know. It's been proven. It's been proven now. So, okay, I'm going to say, well, it always was that way. Yeah, it was, I, I always said it was that way. I told you. <laughs> yeah. So, for people listening, you're at the forefront of creation. You're creating. Don't wait for logic to catch up. Just go. And if you find co-creators that are willing to work with you in the vibrational frequency that's not going to negate what you're doing and you share that you create a new paradigm at one point in time i was i laughed uh, at one point in time there was no such thing as adhd you had to invent it oh yes i know yeah and then uh, after they invented it meant a lot of people have it right? oh my gosh so many people <laughs> how you know how we cr we are creating all the time we're creating on a level there but in this higher vibrational creation like you're teaching people to do higher vibrational creation it, it is you know first of all make sure that you're in the vibratory frequency with people that will support you in that mm -hmm. right? and 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 create and it, all it takes is two or three people 
Yeah. All it really takes is yourself. But yeah, really, yeah. But it's easier if you have co-creators. <laughs> co-creators. Yeah. And, and you're creating a whole new par paradigm. Yeah. Yes, I agree totally. Yeah. Can you hear the wind and the rain? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's fascinating. I thought I'd, I thought I'd see the the the. Yeah, uh, no, I'd have to open the window. I guess obviously this is on a table, and I'm in the chair that's attached to the wall and everything. But you're all well. Anyways, it's been a joy, really, um, getting to know you a little bit better and um, just having a chat. You know, uh, we'll probably do it again. You know. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. When um, the other day I said to Larry, uh, Larry's my fiance, and I said, like, oh my gosh, you know, you literally uh, sent me a link to this person and he's so awesome. And he goes, oh really? Because he loves to get to know new people. Mm -hmm. He says, well, what's he like? What's he like? And I go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like he's awesome. And you know, he has this beautiful